What up, y'all? It's the show off DJ Static Selector putting it down on Prime 8 City TV. Get it right. Cheers. I got lucky and actually got to start doing radio when I was about 14 years old. So, like, I, l- I learned a lot of the, the labels early and I learned um, a lot of connects at radio promo. So, I was getting like free vinyl in the mail and all that as like a kid. And then, um, you know, after I graduated high school, I moved to like into inner Boston and uh, kept doing radio at different radio stations. I did a Hot 97. I did um, 88.9, and finally I ended up doing Jammin', which is like the biggest station up in Boston. That's kind of like the, you know, the, the, the main station in Boston. So um, it's cool. You know, I've been in New York now for eight years. I do Shade 45, which is, you know, the biggest hip-hop station in the world, Eminem's radio station. Yeah. And uh, we do that every Thursday night. Shout to Sammy Needle, Shaw off radio. Right. And, you know, that's the, the radio side of things, but the production thing, you know, is a whole different world. Right, no doubt, no doubt. Um... Like, do you have any crazy cool stories about you going up and down the East Coast DJing? Like, any, like... Oh, man. I probably got, like, a hundred... St- I mean, a million stories, literally. A hundred crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy stories. But yeah. one of the memorable ones is... Um, we threw a party at this guy Gatchel's house in New Hampshire, which is, like, an hour north of Boston. And um, it was a pajama party. And there was about a thousand people there, like... And it, the the house is crazy. You got to see it to believe it. But there's like a man-made pond with like a rope swing and diving boards and cliffs and all this crazy shit. So there's like a thousand people there, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all these cops and like state, you know, state police officers coming out of the woods, like a hundred deep, and start arresting everybody. They arrested me, and there was like a thousand people yelling "free static." They finally let me go, but the uh, the owner of the house got a bunch of charges. But um. They uh, the next day I was on the front page of every newspaper. So like my father and my mother, everybody seeing it, it was kind of bugged out. It was on all the uh, TV stations, and that was just like a regular like private gig. So, I mean, <laughs> oh snap! That was that was a good one though. That's that's crazy, man. Like uh, oh snaps, this thing just turned off on me. I'm gonna bring it back. You see, you can't trust technology, man. Should have just should have just should have just used a piece of paper. This thing's just flipping out, man. Oh, there it goes. Don't trust technology. Just saying, yo. So, um, did you get into like, I mean, what what got you into making beats and, and being a producer? Kind of the same thing that got me into, you know, making the label. It's because I wasn't really feeling a lot of the music. I always been messing with beats since I was at, like, you know, 11, 12 years old. But I never really took it serious until about 2004. And um, one of the first records I got placed was on a KRS One's album, Keep Right. And then I. Uh, I ended up getting a record on um, AZ's album, the, the format. But actually, prior to all that, in 2001, I got my first beat placed on uh, Rex's album on Land Speed when I first met him. And, um, you know, it's funny, 10 years later, he signed on my record label, you know? Yeah. So it's bugged out. That was my first placement when I was 18 years old. And then um, about 2006, 2007, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go hard with it. And then that's when I started doing my own albums. And, um, Using them as like a business card, because when I was working on my first album, people like Freeway and and you know Styles P and all these guys, they they reach out. They didn't even know I was doing the beats on it. They thought it was like a project where like I was just like doing a mixtape. Like I, they didn't know I was actually doing beats. So I used that album as like a business card. The second album the same way. And after that, you know, it just took off. And I started working for other like producing other people's records. And since then, you know, everybody Bun B, Foxy Brown. You know, um, you name them, man. I got you got albums them all. with Saigon, Freeway, um, right. Freddie Gibbs, of course, Terminology 1982, the whole show, everything on show off I'm producing now, you know, along with cats like DJ Premier, Pete Rock, Alchemist. Yo, you were one of the hardest working dudes, man, like in the business. Like, I saw your list and I'm like, ho, oh, I don't even know where to start, like, interviewing. Like, it's hard when I get like certain <laughs> questions because there's so many places to go with it, you know. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, what about like that Ethiopian jazz, like Nas, Damon Marley? As we enter, like, did you did you throw that in there? Like, did you put that in there? What what was up with that? What was that on? Um, I know the song, but uh, as we enter, yeah, I didn't do that. You didn't do that? Nah, you didn't do that one. No, okay. I think I world premiered it or something, but I didn't. I didn't do that song. I okay. actually got a record on Nas' new album though. So, yeah. Yeah, and I've you know I've DJed for him on tour and shit. But, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. We've done um two mixtapes too, the prophecies. So definitely, you know. Word, word, Me and word. Nas go, we got some history, but um, yeah. nah, I didn't do that record. All right, no no doubt. Um, what about, like, uh, your favorite track that you've produced? Like, do you have one? Yeah, probably, uh, man, that's a hard question. Probably either Stop, Look, and Listen, the features uh, Q-Tip, Styles P, and Term, or, um, 
man, I'm not even sure. There's so many. Uh, so Close So Far featuring Bun B and Wiley and Colin Monroe. That's a big one for me. Um, but those are your tracks. Are yeah. Your favorite beats are your tracks? Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the beat I did on Nas' album is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. I got one on Quali's new album I really like a lot. It's hard to really choose. Yeah. I like the record I did on Sheik's last album. Um, man. I got one on Styles' new album that's crazy. I'm trying to think. It's hard to. I'm always thinking about like the future, so yeah. it's hard to really think about all the joints that have come out. But, uh, some of the favorite records I've done are definitely my songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I could definitely see that happen. And you know, you don't have the best beat. You don't want to. You know what I'm saying? It, yo, it didn't even happen like that. Originally, it was just like dudes were fronting, so I had to make my own records. And then cats would be like, "Oh, why didn't you play me that beat?" Like, yo, I played it for you. But um, now it's different. Now a lot of my a lot of the beats get snatched up before my projects. Ah, uh, still, beats are hot, you know what I'm saying? Thanks, um, Yeah, no doubt. It's respect. What's your favorite collabo? Favorite collab? MOP and Jadakiss on For The City, because, um, you know, just the, the way that record happened and Hot 97 was playing every day. That was like my most, at that point, it was the record I had on the radio the most. And just MOP and Jadakiss is a little collabo. And yeah. I was excited about that one. Shout out to Little Fame. He made that happen, so. Respect. Um, what do you love more, like the music making or the promoting other people's music? I mean, definitely the music making. And uh, I like DJing and playing my own records that I made and seeing the response. Like to me, that's like because the whole reason I started DJing really was DJ Premier, who's you know infamous for playing his own records because you know his catalog is so amazing. So when I, you know, when I, when I go out to Japan or, you know, Germany or places like this and the crowd goes crazy for the records that I'm playing, that I actually produced, it gets no better than that, you know? Yeah. Um, what rappers do you feel are hot right now? Well, that's when my new album comes into play. It comes out in September and it's called Population Control. It's all the new, it's all the new generation. So, um, Big Crit. You know, Freddie Gibbs, uh, Mac Miller, Pill. I got a lot of new cats on there. Um, man, too many to name. I got, uh, I gotta think for a second. <laughs> it's all good. I got, of course, Joe Ortiz on there. Um, you know, the whole show off camp's on there. Uh, there's a lot of records. I got a couple OGs on the album, just, you know, a few. Oh, Action Bronson, me and him got an album coming out too. He's one of the newer cats that's really impressive. Um, but Bun B's on the album, Talib Kweli, um, man, a lot of cats. Right, that's, 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 I really I'm like in awe right now. I want to get J. Cole on the album, we'll see if we can make it happen last minute. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be dope. J. Cole, he got some, he got, he's nice, he's nice. But yo, I mean, Bun B, all those guys, that's, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's legendary. Yeah. Me and Bun are doing a project too, but I'm not letting out any info yet. Yeah. Hey. Prime City music, man. We get all the exclusive stuff here first. You know what I'm saying? Um, what uh, where do you want to see hip hop go? I want to see uh, the the a lot of the the younger kids that are embracing like the trends. I want to see them embrace like the 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 raw form of it. Like like that's why I like cats like Mac Miller because they come out rapping on like you know he blew up rapping off like Lord Finesse and and beats like that. And I want to see him, you know, really tell his crowd about the history of it and the, you know, the primos and the large professors and the Pete Rocks and see the kids embrace that again. Because when I was a kid, I embraced it, even if it was before my time. Like, I was up on Marley Mall, even though, you know, all that Juice Crew and all the early, you know, biz and all that, I was five years old when that came out. But when I was 13, 14, I went back and researched it all, Eric B and Rakim and all that, to the point where I was familiar with the whole genre, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the same with the early stuff too, the Cold Crush, you know, Run DMC, all that. I think the kids now should go back. They're listening to all these kids rapping on, you know, the 90s instrumentals. They should go back and actually f and understand that. So I think it's, it's a lot of the artists' responsibilities to really let them know about that too. And Mac's doing his thing. Me and Mac had a long conversation about it. But the kid's like, you know, he's on his way to like superstardom right now. And he, uh, you know, I told him it's real important for you to keep that torch going because otherwise, you know. The, the the major companies will just destroy hip hop and not care. They already did. But. Yeah, no doubt. Respect on that. Big up. Um, like you you mentioned DJ Premier, but who else inspired you when you were coming up? Pete Rock, Dr. Dre, Q Tip. 
um, Jay Dilla, Lodge Professor, uh, Molly Ma, like I said. Um, man. So all uh, your heroes are my heroes? I mean, a lot of people say those names, but it is what it is, you know? Like, yeah. they, now, now, like, you know, a lot of these guys are friends of mine, and it's like, it's bugged out because, you know, I, I'll see my album on, like, the top five of Primo's albums of the year or something like that. And like, you know, besides the friendship, just seeing that alone is like, damn, like, you know, I did what I what I came to do. So now it's like I wanna be I wanna take it to the next level. Right. No doubt. Excuse me. Right, no doubt. <laughs> um uh, Do you do you feel any rivalries amongst other producers? Not at all, not one bit. Like about how about like competitiveness like in the sense? None. No, I just never felt it. Like I think I'm my own lane because there's no one else like doing the the scratches and the soul samples and the just certain. I think I'm my own lane. There's only a couple people doing that. Obviously, Primo has his own. You know, he's at the top of the throne. I'll never even try to like. I would never look at any kind of Primo's Primo. You know what right. I mean? He's in the top. I mean, my number one, but he's in everyone's top three, arguably. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So I would never even consider that. But who else is actually doing scratches on records now? Like. No one, and it's right. a shame because I wish there was some competition where people come out and do cuts. And, you know, different producers have DJs doing cuts, but it's different when the actual producer does both. And like, you know, it's a different formula. So I encourage kids coming up to get into DJing and producing together because I feel like now kids just grab Fruity Loops or Pro Tools and and make beats and don't understand the DJ part of it. And the, the DJ is the foundation to it to begin with. Right. No doubt. It's definitely important to them for them to have a concept that, you know, it started off with the turntables. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so like, you talked about Fruity Loops, um, your beats. Can you tell us more about some of some of your beats, especially, like, on the Saigon album? You have, like, this really... I mean, I, I've listened to your stuff, and I listen to the Saigon album. The Saigon album has its own taste, you know what I'm saying? It has its own flavor. And uh, some of my favorite beats that you've produced are on that album. Really? That's yeah. funny, because... I hear so many different things, and it's funny because me and Sia, like, we, we've been throwing around the idea of doing the, the next one all on all another day's work, probably, like, in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> and, like, the, the beats on the, on the new joint. Like, we've picked a couple, but we're going to do a lot of it on the spot. But, like, it's a whole different vibe. But it's cool hearing people's opinions on that because, to me, a lot of them were, like, throw out. They were, like, throwaways at the time. We were just going through sessions, and we ended up picking them. But that's dope. But appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Like, what do you produce on? Do you produce MPC? What? What's up? I started on the MPC. Um, now everything's in Pro Tools. I do everything in Pro Tools. Everything Just in Pro Tools. Two turntables. You know, I have a keyboard, but I only use that for like bass lines and certain sounds. But everything's in Pro Tools. Nice. Um, what is your favorite sampler? Favorite sampler? Yeah. I mean, the MPC. But I haven't used it in five years. Yeah. No, no external samplers, ASR. Nah, tennis, everything so. in Pro Tools. Everything. Yeah. Like literally, I chop up my drums, I sample it in, all that. That's that's nice, man. I actually use Serato kind of as a sampler now. Like I'll take the vinyl, record it, and then export it and chop it up in Serato. Okay, I didn't even I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tip for everybody out there: chop it up in Serato. DJs do your thing. <laughs> um, uh, what what which is your what, mm, excuse me? Which is the favorite album you made? Uh, I don't even know. Probably 100 Proof, just because uh, it was like a very personal album to me, and I just had to get a lot off my um, shoulders with stuff. Because a lot, you know, even though I'm not rapping on the songs, I set the vibe and I told a lot of the MCs what I wanted on the songs. You know, from dealing with girl problems to alcoholism and all that. Like the new album's not gonna deal with none of that. The new album's like a positive vibe. I felt like that was just 2009 was just a dark time where I had to get rid of uh, in my life. So now I'm like. I'm in good spirits. A lot of lot of things are happening, and the new album's very upbeat. That's dope. That's one thing about your samples, like the soul samples you have. Like it always has like this really good vibe, where people could just bob their heads. Good look, good look. Um, what you call it? Uh, if you could ever, like you was mentioning, young cats coming up, learning turntable stuff like that. If you could ever give like an MC the starting up advice, what would you give him? Listen to. Uh, like paid in full and um, criminal minded and you know just non-stop on loop for like a year and then you learn how to rap <laughs> yo man that's that's what's up I, I still love a nine millimeter goes bang crazy that's 
You a crack dealer by the name of Peter. That's, that's There's just personality to it. A lot of rap now doesn't either. Ha it either has too much personality and lacks lyrics, or you know it's the other way around. It's all lyrics and no personality. Word. What about like DJs that are or producers that are starting up? I tell people all the time: if you're a DJ, you sit there and go do what do what do what do what for like hours a week, and you'll learn the. You know, change the speed and the tempo of it, and you'll learn like the the mechanics of how a record scratches. A lot of people don't even do that; they just think hitting the crossfader and just moving the record all crazy sounds good. And a lot of them never learn the right way. Even like some of the biggest DJs in the world, they don't know like the foundation of scratching. That's, that, that shit kills me. Right, right, no doubt. Well, um, that's all I got for you, man. It's all good. I mean, I could ask you like five other million questions, <laughs> but like, I think we should just check out the sunset, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, the sun's going down, it's about Drink that time. ourselves a nice cold beer, yeah, you know sir, what I'm saying? Cheers once again. Cheers. You know what I'm saying? Prime 8 City TV, this is Mr. Min and... Going up. Stag Selector, we here in Germany, let's go. Let's go. One.